Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class this morning. Hope you all had a good uh, weekend. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Yes. Hope, yes. You all have, hope you all had a good weekend, all of you. <coughs> Sorry, I'm having a cold and uh, uh, a throat infection, so just please bear with my voice this morning um but hope all of you had a good weekend and are back again with full energy and strength to face another new week okay we'll begin a uh, class before we begin can i ask uh, uh say can you please lead us in prayer this morning yes pastor thank you morning everyone let us pray in jesus name our father in heaven thank you for the weekend that has come and gone and thank you for a new week a new working week and thank you that we are alive and thank you for how far lord you've brought us lord and thank you for today's class thank you for our instructor our pastor thank you for everything we would learn today and thank you because we'll be rightly equipped lord to bring up children in the way of the lord and to teach them youth children toddlers at every age lord the wisdom and all the techniques lord that we need in order that they may grow in the word of the lord and continue the work that lord we will pass on to them we give you praise and glory we seek your wisdom we seek understanding to be able to understand all that we are taught and to retain the knowledge, Lord, that we'll be impacted with. Thank you, Lord. At the end of this class, take the glory forever, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Say. So last week, um, uh, we were looking at uh, last class on Wednesday. Uh, we looked at how, you know, we can begin um the lesson plan or begin teaching a lesson to the children so we were focusing on the introduction and i said that um, you know you could use an attention getter to make your introduction more interesting um uh, make it more uh, appealing for the kids uh, you know uh, uh, raise their curiosity uh, get them excited about the lesson uh, and what you're going to teach them so that they are listening to you they are focused um, and they're paying attention. So we looked at uh, how to make the introduction uh, interesting. And I mentioned uh, two things that you could do. One is an attention getter, and the other is object lessons. Um, and I gave you a couple of examples uh, for the attention getters and also um, told you what uh, an object lesson is. Um, you know, it's uh, on the screen in the PowerPoint said basically introduce the object teach the basic truth and relate the object to the Bible text. And um, I gave you a couple of examples and demonstrated a few object lessons uh, that you could use um, to communicate um, uh, truths to children, concepts uh, which are difficult, which they don't understand, uh, which can become more easier even as you do an object lesson. And also the importance of doing an object lesson is you know, so that when children look at the objects uh, sometime later on in their life, even as they grow up to be adults, uh, the truth that you have taught them or the concept that you have brought about from God's word uh, will, you know, uh, come back to memory and God can use that to speak to them, to relate to their situation, their challenges, um, uh, or even, you know, give them an answer in their time of uh, need. So we also saw that Jesus used object lessons um, when he taught so that, you know, when he was uh, gone, got, when he goes back to the Father, you know, when they look at all of these uh, things around them, the objects, uh, whatever, you know, whether it's a mountain or um, the fig tree or the uh, seeds or the sparrow, uh, lilies in the field, they'll be reminded of all that he has uh, taught them. Okay, so uh, that is what we looked at uh, last week. 
uh, how to use uh, attention uh, getters uh, to make it more interesting, uh, to introduce a lesson, and also how to uh, use object lessons. Object lessons, not necessary that you have to use it only in the beginning of the class as, uh, as an introduction, but you could also use it um, you know, when you are teaching the lesson somewhere midway to reiterate a concept or to bring about a concept which is difficult for children to understand. Um, or you could use it at the end of the lesson, uh, you know, just to remind them about what you have taught or um, just to bring about the truth of the learning in a more clearer, uh, precise and, uh, you know, a, a, a way that they can remember for uh, life. Okay, now we'll move on to the main teaching content, um, how, you know, we looked at uh, uh, how to prepare a curriculum, what are the topics to choose, how to choose the topics, and then, uh, you know, based on the topics that you've chosen, how to, uh, uh, you know, um, look for the appropriate um, uh, narratives in the Bible, and then how to start writing a lesson plan. So we looked in detail how to, uh, uh, you know, begin um, a, a lesson, uh, the introduction, and for that we looked at uh, various ways that we can uh, begin an introduction, what we need to say, how we need to put things across, how to keep the main truth uh, flowing through the lesson um, or the main concept. Uh, and also we looked at attention getters and object lessons. And now we'll go on to the main teaching content. So we finished the introduction. Now we're coming to the teaching content. Uh, so what are some of the points that you need to keep in mind even as you are writing a lesson plan uh, and you're writing the main teaching content, what you need to keep in mind. Uh, some uh, basic things that you can keep in mind is, you know, uh, keep the language very, very simple. Uh, now, generally, when uh, we tend to speak to children, we kind of speak to them as if we're speaking to another adult because we are adults and, uh, you know, we kind of use language or jargons or um, say things that, uh, you know, which we can understand, which we can uh, uh, comprehend in our minds. And we just speak it like that to the kids, but we need to understand that they are not adults. They're not the same age or the wavelength or the understanding or the comprehension uh, that we have. Uh, they are children. So we need to uh, relate to them, speak to them in a level that they will understand, they will comprehend. Uh, so, you know, um, uh, it's important. That is why I've been reiterating throughout that we need to write a lesson plan and not just kind of, you know, think it across in our mind and go and teach it to the children. Because when we do that, you know, there will be so many different loopholes uh, which will um, be kind of a hindrance for children to understand you, comprehend, and also to for your class to be very, very effective. And one of this is, you know, the language that we use. So when you're writing out this whole lesson plan, you know, you will come across various words that you have used uh, and you can think about how you can simplify it so that, you know, the children can understand. And once you have that whole lesson uh, plan written out, you know exactly what you're going to communicate. And when you communicate it, you know, children will be able to understand. They will come along with you. Uh, uh, they will walk alongside with you even as you are teaching the lesson. Now, what do I mean by keeping the language simple? For example, if you're talking about uh, the prodigal son, you can say, you know, um, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about prodigal son. Now, children will not know what's the meaning of a prodigal. So, you know, you would like to use a simpler word for that, substitute it with a simpler word, you know, a, a lost son or a, a son who was, uh, uh, you know, uh, disobedient to his father or, you know, went away from his father. So you can think of various ways how you could, you know, uh, 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 even have uh, the right topic for that lesson or communicate uh, the right words uh, to the children. Now you can say the, you know, the son took all his money and went uh, and spent it in loose living. Okay, uh, some of the versions of the Bible says when they spend it in loose living. Now, what is loose living? Children only know they you know they have their shoes are loose or their clothes is, clothes they wear is sometimes loose. You know, 
so they're not able to understand what is loose living so you need to uh, you know think of how you're going to say what he did with the money how he spent it you know um uh, you know, you can't say he went and, uh, you know, uh, spent it on women. They will not be able to understand, uh, you know, he was a womanizer or, you know, he got drunk or all of those things. So how are you going to explain to them what is loose living or how he spent his money? Or if you're talking about uh, jealousy, they might, you know, not really understand the whole word what's the meaning of the word jealousy so how you're going to explain it uh you, you if you're talking about moses uh you know god told moses to go to pharaoh the wondering who pharaoh is what is this name pharaoh so you can say you know pharaoh is the name for the king of egypt so you know uh, those who rule this country called egypt uh the kings were called as pharaoh just like you know when you go to school the person who teaches you is called a teacher okay so uh you know pharaoh famine um uh you can explain that then straw they will not you know uh, uh, pharaoh never gave for the people straw to make bricks so you know some children can identify straw as the one like a like a pipe they used to you know, put it in a in a glass or a tumbler or a in a, a juice tetra pack and they just you know suck the juice or water or whatever uh so they will think of uh, that as a straw so you know you need to uh, talking about plagues what is a plague uh you know jesus went for the pool of Bethesda. what is a pool if you're talking about beatitudes then you need to you know what is beatitudes and uh or if you're talking about uh creation and temptation you know um uh the serpent spoke to eve now what is a serpent or if you say the snake spoke to Eve, how can a snake speak? Uh, snake uh, do not speak. So, you know, you need to, uh, when you're writing the lesson plan, then you know, okay, I need to explain these things to children or how can I use simpler words or, you know, how can I explain this better? So it's, uh, you need to keep the language very simple. The second thing is, you know, um, we as adults, uh, we can use a lot of uh, Christian jargons, like, you know, we can say, we've uh, made righteous or we've been justified by faith we've been redeemed um or you know uh, uh, uh the blood of jesus uh, 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 has redeemed us we are sanctified we are sinners we are saved by grace through faith uh the blood of jesus cleanses us you know you can talk about the covenant you can talk about the communion now they're all wondering what is all of this you know what is righteousness what is justification uh how uh, are we sinners how are we saved by grace through faith uh how can the blood of jesus cleanse us you know blood is something that is uh can be very horrific for children can be very scary they only know that water cleanses so how can the blood of jesus how can somebody's blood cleanse somebody so you know all of these things when you are going to um um uh, you want to communicate you need to stop in your lesson and say even if i'm using this word righteousness or i'm using uh you know the blood of jesus cleanses us from our sins how am i going to explain it to the kids how am i going to make it simpler easier for them to understand so now you're seeing the importance of why it is important for you to write out a lesson plan otherwise we will say a lot of things which we would think children have understood but they wouldn't have and some and most children don't ask questions or you know they might be very quiet and they, they will be totally put off and they won't listen to your class because they're not able to uh you know uh, relate with what you're saying or understand what you are uh, saying okay and even when you are trying to explain these concepts to children uh, we need to understand how we need to explain these concepts to children who are uh, in third grade and those who are in the eighth grade or those who are in the tenth grade so likewise you need to write out your lesson plan and see how best you can explain it to uh, uh, children okay now um, our goal uh, as uh, children's church ministers or sunday school teachers is not just to uh, narrate uh, a narrative from a bible or an incident from the bible but it's important that we also teach them some you know uh, 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 deeper truths 
uh, from God's word or, you know, a, a, put it in other words, theology, bring out uh, deeper truths or the theology. And I've already explained this quite in detail uh, in the previous classes. Uh, so I'll just give you a couple of examples, just one or two, and uh, kind of, uh, you know, bring back to memory what I have said in the past. Uh, so when I said, you know, uh, how can we bring out theological truths uh, when we're teaching them about creation? Uh, I said, you know, we can say that God created us in his image and likeness. So children will think, okay, we are like God, but how are we like God? You know, so you need to explain that, you know, when God, uh, said that he created us and he will create us in his image and likeness it means god is holy he does not do any sin he created us holy you know god never uh sins he created us sinless and that's why uh adam and eve never sinned when they were in the garden until they disobeyed god you know uh, god never dies he created us never to die you know god has a mind he thinks uh and so he gave us a mind to think that is why we are you know, thinking beings and, you know, uh, God gave us a will. That means we can choose whether we can do right or uh, wrong. So, you know, this is something that is a deeper truth, a theological truth that you can bring about even as you're teaching them about how God created us in his image and likeness. Another example uh, for it uh, is when you're narrating uh, the blind man, Bartim is a story, you know, you can, you're telling them, uh, you can just narrate the story and say, you know, uh, uh, but nobody helped Bartimaeus, blah, blah. And, you know, finally, uh, Jesus heard him and uh, he received back his sight. And, you know, the kids will be very happy. But what is the main truth? What is deeper truths, a profound truth that you would like to bring about? You know, you're teaching them about faith. So you can just tell children, you know, it's important to have faith. Why do you think uh, uh, Bartimaeus uh, you know, was healed uh, because he had faith. Now you can just leave it at that, but you can go into much deeper thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 to the deeper level and say, you know, um, uh, uh, instead of just talking about faith, you can tell them uh, what are the various, uh, you know, uh, uh, properties of faith um, or the framework in which fra uh, faith activates or works. So you can say, you know, uh, you know, uh, Bartim, yes, he was blind. Could he see? No. Uh, did he see Jesus doing any miracles? No, he did not see Jesus doing any miracles. Um, uh, uh, so he just heard that there was this man who was coming and he's done many miracles. And, you know, uh, Bartim is just thought in his heart, this is my only chance uh, to be able to, you know, get back my sight and to see and to live uh, a, a good life. And uh, so, you know, um, uh, uh, he tried his best and you can go on with the story, you know, uh, he tried his best. Nobody was helping him and um, he couldn't see where Jesus was. He tried to move in the crowd. He was falling, you know, people were getting irritated and angry because he was falling on them. He was falling down and there was a big crowd and uh, no one was willing to help him because everyone was saying, we want to see Jesus and all of those things you can narrate. And, uh, you know, um, what could Bartimaeus do? You know, nobody was helping him. Nobody was taking him to Jesus. He could have, um, you know, given up, uh, but he did not give up. You know, he thought of an uh, idea. He just screamed. He shouted wherever he was uh, till Jesus heard him, uh, till he went to Jesus and received back his sight. So you can say, children, this is faith. So faith is you know, we don't see Jesus just like we don't, uh, Bartimaeus couldn't see Jesus, but, you know, Bartimaeus believed that Jesus could heal him. So all of you are saying, you know, we can't see God. How do we know God helps? But here was Bartimaeus. He could not see Jesus, but he knew that Jesus was the only one who could give him back his, uh, his eyesight. And, uh, you know, he just did everything possible. And that is faith, children. Faith is when we don't see, uh, you know, but yet we believe that Jesus is there. He is there to help. He hears my prayer. He will answer. And faith is also, you know, when we don't give up. You know, uh, Bartimaeus never gave up. There was nobody who to help him. There was uh, everyone where, you know, put him in, uh, uh, taking him and putting him in a corner. Uh, nobody was willing to listen to him. Nobody was willing to help him out. Also see the possibility, hey, there was this man who couldn't see. We could, we can see, at least we can help him and take him to Jesus. Um, 
but you know Bartimaeus never gave up and that is faith faith is when we don't give up faith is when we keep pressing until we see the uh, answer and so Bartimaeus kept pressing in you know till he received this answer so you know when you're teaching them uh, this this is the deeper truths that you're trying to bring out and then you know children uh, through just the story of Bartimaeus they are just going to learn this profound a concept of faith which is going to really build up the rest of their life and their uh, trust and their dependence on uh, God okay uh, another example that you can talk about is Zacchaeus I already explained Zacchaeus how the very presence of Jesus in uh, Zacchaeus's home changed it even though Jesus did not speak anything uh, I also talked about how repentance you can talk about the deeper truths about what repentance is repentance is not just saying sorry and then you know going back and doing the same thing but it's a total transformation and how the very presence of Jesus in our life can bring total change total transformation which nobody can uh, do, which is, can be unbelievable, but that's what the power of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of Jesus in our life can uh, do. Another example I gave you was David's um, uh, uh, incident with Goliath and how he said, you know, I come to fight uh, in the name of the Lord. So you can talk about how God's name is powerful, uh, how he made covenant to his name and just speaking the name of Jesus, how, you know, brings healing, deliverance. I have already explained that. Uh, another example that you could use is, um, you know, um, Elijah's obedience. You know, when God tells Elijah, go to King Ahab and tell him, uh, you know, um, that there's not going to be rain in the land. And um, uh, Elijah, you know, uh, obeys. Now, his obedience is not simple. It was not easy. Elijah knew that he could not go to the king with the kind of clothes that he was wearing, with his beard, with his long hair. Uh, he had to have permission. Uh, and in those days, you can't take a bad news to the king. And he, he did not, you know, he knew he wouldn't get permission. He knew he could not tell this bad news, but he had a choice, uh, you know, whether to obey God or to save his life and not go to the king but you know he obeyed God so that is obedience obedience is not when it's easier or simple for us obedience is when God tells us to do things even when it's very difficult even when we don't like it even when it's going to uh, you know uh, it means that it's going to bring some kind of harm or danger to our life and then when Ahab, uh, when Elijah obeys uh, God he goes and tells King Ahab he runs away you know, God tells him uh, where to go, you know, go to the brook of Cherith, and then he sends the ravens to feed him. So, you know, Elijah again obeys God. He does not tell God, how can I go to a brook? You know, it's a, it's a water place, and uh, the soldiers are going to look for me. They're going to come and find me here. Why can't you hide me in a cave? And all of those things, but he just trusted God. He just obeyed God. And, you know, when he was there at the right time, in the right place, God protected him, God provided him food. Just imagine, you know, the rest of the uh, uh, the country were uh, in famine, no food, but Elijah had water, he had food. Uh, then God tells him to go to Zarephath, you know, um, and he could have said, how can I go to Zarephath, God, because that's where uh, the queen, wicked queen Jezebel, King Ahab's wife, uh, uh, is from, and people will be looking for me in the villages. Uh, how can I go and stay with a widow lady? You know, she herself will be poor, blah, blah, you know, uh, and all of those things. But um, uh, you can talk about, you know, the whole concept of obedience again. You know, obedience is when we just do what God tells us to do, even though we think it's not right, even though we don't see anything good going to be coming out of it or uh, uh, things don't appeal to us, but that is obedience. And you say when Elijah obeyed God at different points, God saved him, God provided for him, he provided food, water, uh, and, uh, you know, blessed him. So obedience, what does it do? So, you know, uh, just narrating a story can be good, but, you know, just bringing about all of these key important truths uh, can be so um, uh, life enriching uh, for children and they can just uh, you know learn so much more uh, last example I'll give you is about Joseph you know uh, 
uh, now why did God uh, cause Potiphar to look only at Joseph when he had so many slaves in his household? Um, you know, why well, is God partial? But no, you know, you can talk about, even though the Bible does not say it, but, you know, Joseph's attitude to his work, he could have sat there and, you know, grumbled and murmured, saying that his brothers sold him as a slave. He's a rich man's son. He's never worked. He'll never do any work. Uh, he could have thrown all his tantrums and all of those things. But, you know, he worked. He was sincere. And God looked at his attitude. So you're talking, you can tell children how our attitude is so important to God, the way we study, the way we use our time, where we use our talents, you know. Um, and because of that, God caused Potiphar to uh, look at Joseph and Joseph moved from the position of a slave to, uh, you know, taking hold uh, uh, as a manager of entire uh, 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 Potiphar's household, his business and everything. And God blessed him. So if you want to do well in your studies, if you want to get good marks, if you want to be a leader, if you want to win, uh, you know, competitions, then your attitude is very important to God. And so you just through this story, you just bring about this profound truth of, you know, our motives and attitudes, uh, which can help uh, children uh, 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 in a greater way. And also, you know, uh, most children who are not studying or, you know, they have this whole complex, they can't study this subject, they can't study that. But it was difficult for Joseph in the situation that he was, but, you know, look at his attitude. So when our attitude is right, when we're doing things that are right, God will help us. So you can use all of these, you know, narratives, uh, which is, um, which can, you know, we can think about different uh, themes or truths that we can bring about, but they can be profound, deeper uh, truths or theological truths that we can uh, impart to the children at a very young age, and it will just uh, help them, uh, uh, you know, immensely. Okay. Um, the next thing that you can keep in mind, even as you are writing the main teaching content uh, for your lesson is, you know, uh, plan, uh, think about relevant um, activities, illustrations, uh, object lessons or uh, pictures or, you know, if you want to do a small demonstration or you want them to enact something, whatever you can, you know, uh, use this whole teaching content time to bring about all of these things so that children are listening uh, and also are um, attentive because um, research shows us that children learn 10% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they hear and see, 70% of what they hear, see and say, and 90% of what they hear, see, say and uh, do. So you're, uh, when you're, you know, having your main teaching content, you're writing it out, you know, if you're just going to keep speaking to them, uh, you can use a lot of, you know, body language, eye contact, voice modulation, and all of those things. But uh, children can, will only pick up 10% of what they hear. But if you get them to, you know, uh, hear, see through some, demonstration, object lessons, activity, uh, uh, a skit or whatever, you know, or a small video uh, and also get them to do something, then they're going to learn 90% of, uh, you know, what you are communicating to them uh, is what they are going to retain in their uh, mind. So it's very important that you use, um, you know, uh, 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 activities that would uh, you know uh, help their learning styles and also we looked at the eight different intelligences or eight different ways of learning uh, you know you can also incorporate that and see how best you can do things uh, in the main teaching content to elaborate the uh, uh, truths uh, uh, to bring about the truths and uh, also continue with your uh, lesson any questions so far Okay, no questions. Okay, um, so to get, you need to get your children actively involved, uh, no matter how hard you, you know, work, 
uh, to plan an interesting and exciting lesson. You know, most of the children uh, will become bored if you do all the talking. So get uh, do a lot of class activities where you get them involved. Uh, you know, so there's a participatory learning, uh, and when there's participatory learning, their enthusiasm for that class really um, increases. Okay. Um, now, the next few things that we need to keep in mind when you're writing the main teaching content is, uh, you know, uh, I would just like to say that um, before we go on to the next point, uh, you know, uh, uh, don't just narrate the whole story and then, you know, in the end, uh, try to bring out the learning or the theological truths or the deeper truths. Uh, that will not work perfectly fine because once children have listened to the entire story, they were like, okay, now I don't need to listen to, you know, what is obedience? How can I be obedient? Uh, you know, our attitude or faith, uh, they will kind of tune off. Uh, so what we need to do is like what parents do for their children. You know, if they don't like some vegetables or they like to just eat meat or they don't like, uh, you know, to eat uh, 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 some veggies or some uh, like spinach, uh, some green leafy vegetables. What the parent does is, you know, chops them all uh, and then puts them in the meat and then kind of makes it as a roll uh, or uh, just put some sauce, mayo or, uh, you know, uh, and give it to them as a roll or a burger or a pizza, whatever. So the, the, uh, it's very creatively done by the parent. Uh, the child doesn't know that, you know, the, the, they, uh, uh, there's veggies there, there's spinach there. Uh, they will just eat it because they know it's a roll, there's meat, there is, uh, you know, they just see the cream or the mayo or the sauce and they're excited. Uh, but, you know, that is how the parent basically packages the whole thing so that they get their children to enjoy their meal and also eat the, the vegetables uh, or the green leafy vegetables that they want them to uh, eat. So in the same way, we need to also do this when we are writing a lesson plan. Um, so at different points in the narrative, you kind of bring in the learning, uh, bring in the truth so that, you know, uh, they're waiting to listen to what happened to the next part of the story. Then they have to listen to the learning. And uh, after you, you know, uh, bring about the learning, you know, stop, pause, ask them a question so that you 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 can know whether they have understood, uh, they are with you, they are listening, and then move on with the story. But don't, please don't narrate the entire story and then come to the uh, conclusion, you finish your conclusion and then say, okay, what did we learn today? And I'm going to teach you what we're going to learn, uh, how we can apply this, then they're going to be totally lost because some of them will not be interested. So we need to really package, uh, uh, you know, all the learning in between so that, uh, uh, you know, learning happens alongside uh, them listening to the narrative. Yes, Charles. Oh, thank you so much. I wanted to add on that point of weaving uh, the the message or the content that you wanted to teach the children in a way that when you you pile it in one point, it will not bear meaning to the children, but you weave it through the story. You, you have some little package that you are going to talk about, maybe after the introduction, then you talk about some things of your story, then you bring out a, another another thing that you wanted to achieve, then maybe towards the conclusion, then you have something like that. Otherwise, if you pile it, I have seen it here with children when you teach, and you, you pile it on only one point, they will not get it. And uh, as you are doing the story and you involve them, especially when you have that teaching point, then the children are going to remember it, as you said, according to the research. The more they talk, the more they get involved, maybe the gestures that they are doing, the more they get that point. And at the end, if you are doing a review or you are going to do a recap, you will find that the children have understood it. In fact, we call it uh, total child teaching, when you weave and you are putting the teaching points at different points, uh, in the in the in the teaching, uh, you we call it a lesson. It's no longer a story, but 
it becomes a lesson because the children are learning, you are touching their lives, uh, you are bringing out information that is not way back to the story of Batmas. Batmas was a Jew, very blind. It's a story that can be talked by even Muslims and non-Christians. But the moment you put there the points, the, 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 the main truths in the, in the story, then it becomes a lesson and you are teaching them and you are touching their lives. I thank you. Thank you very much, Charles, for sharing your insights. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, we'll uh, move on. Um, you know, uh, the next thing you need to keep in mind is, you know, uh, uh, sometimes we can just simply keep teaching the children, presenting information, but this does not guarantee that learning is taking place, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, we just can't assume that because we are talking or because I'm teaching that all of the students are listening, all of them are understanding. That is why at important uh, points in your teaching content, you need to stop, you know, uh, throw in a question or two or, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, ask something which uh, can you can gather uh, from them, whether they are understanding, they have caught the truth, what you're telling them. Uh, so it's, you know, just good to check their understanding at various points in the uh, story. So when you're writing the lesson, you can pause at different places uh, where you can ask them questions and you can know whether they have understood, um, you know, what you have um, taught them. And also when you have finished now writing your entire lesson, you come to know it's a, it's a very long lesson. Uh, you can look at ways to cut it down, what you can exclude, what you can remove. Um, but if you think that this is, is a long narrative and you need two classes, two uh, teaching hours, two Sundays, uh, or even three Sundays, then you can look at where you can pause at various points in the story, where you can bring out the conclusion, the climax, and uh, and where you are going to give them what how they can apply to practice what they have learned that week, and where you're going to continue uh, from the next week, and what you're going to do, and what activities can be included in this uh, uh, week, what uh, can be moved on to the next week, so then you have everything uh, at your disposal, everything is clear and once everything is clear you know uh, it becomes very easy to go and teach the uh, children and you know uh, it, it becomes very very effective now uh, we need to know that um, you know when we ministered in God's kingdom uh, whether it's 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 uh, teaching children whether it's teaching youth or doing a Bible study or preaching or evangelism or even in the workplace you know God wants us to do things with excellence um, because he's a God who is perfect, a God of excellence, uh, a God of order. And uh, so also when we are ministering to children, please, uh, you know, uh, it's a humble request that we do things uh, in, a, in, an, in an orderly way, in a way that um, uh, is, um, you know, it's it, it, an excellent way, uh, doing our best, not doing things that, uh, you know, half hazard. Uh, it's okay, I can just think about something, I can run it through my mind, I can do this, I can do that, and just go to class. Important that, you know, when we plan, when we prepare, and we go, God, uh, you know, honors uh, the, the hard work. Uh, there's no substitute for hard work. There is, um, you know, like we're going to study in, in 2 Timothy, uh, where uh, Paul is telling uh, Timothy, you know, you need to be like a soldier uh, and like a, uh, like a farmer and like an athlete. You know, a soldier uh, is not, even though he takes care of his family, uh, but when he has to be there on duty, he is there. Uh, or like an athlete, he follows the rules. Uh, you know, uh, the rules is that, you know, you you, you do things uh, in the way God wants us to do. And uh, a farmer is, you know, he's going to reap uh, uh, his uh, the fruits of his labor only if he works hard, if he's sleeping, if he's lazy, if he's not uh, diligent, is not sincere and hardworking, he will not uh, reap the harvest.
harvest. So if we want to reap harvest, which God is looking for, these children which are, who are very precious to him, because the children of uh, uh, the kingdom of God belongs to uh, such as these, and he points out to children. So, you know, if we, we need to look for harvest, God is going to hold us accountable, and we need to do our best. And, uh, you know, so it's important to write down everything, uh, explain things, do things in an orderly way and have it more structured uh, so that, you know, children are benefited and um, uh, the next generation is taught the word of God and they are built in the ways of the uh, Lord. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, um, I'll just move on to the last uh, part of uh, this whole, um, uh, you know, uh, children's ministry curriculum or this course um, uh, talking about how to narrate and um, uh, a story, okay, uh, how to narrate a story. So uh, just look at a few points and then we'll see if we can finish this uh, in today's lesson. Then uh, this will be our last class. If not, uh, you know, we'll continue on. Uh, Wednesday. Okay, so how do we uh, narrate a story? Uh, a Bible story is a narrative uh, of events and actions. So how do we uh, can best narrate a, a, a story or a narrative to children? The beginning is very, very um, important. So there are four main ways to begin a story. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can also discover or find out various effective ways and how you could uh, begin a story. And if you find, uh, you know, uh, other ways you could use it, don't hesitate from using it. Uh, but just to narrate a story, uh, we look at um, First Kings chapter 21. Okay, First Kings chapter 21 is a story about uh, King Ahab, uh, how he wanted, uh, you know, this um, vineyard, which was next to his summer palace in Samaria. Um, uh, and uh, he finds out who's the owner and uh, he comes to know it's Naboth. He uh, tells Naboth that he would pay him the price, a good price for that uh, vineyard uh, because he wanted it and or he will give him another vineyard, some other uh, place in the, uh, in the country. But uh, Naboth refuses his proposal and says, you know, this is something that he has uh, received from his ancestors. Now, this was something that Israelites did. They, they would not pass on their or sell out their um, ancestral property which they received from their forefathers or something that was for them to keep they would not sell it so he refused to give it and so King Ahab is very angry he's sulking uh, he does not eat he's just lying on his bed he does not talk to anyone and you know what happens when the king does that everyone around him uh, follows suit they, they, they also do the same thing um, and um, the news uh, reaches Queen Jezebel and she comes and says, why are you sulking? Why aren't you eating? So he tells him, uh, you know, what happens. And so he says, uh, she says, you're the king. You know, you can have what you want. She says, you know, get up, uh, dress up, you know, uh, eat and you will have that vineyard. And she writes letters to uh, those in authority in the village that neighbor is in and tells them to just, you know, bring him to the, the gate of the city where, you know, they have, all the elders sit and they judge and all that. So bring him there and just, you know, have two people accuse him of blaspheming God and take him out and stone him. And that's what they do. And Jezebel comes, uh, receives news and comes and tells King Ahab, you can go and take uh, Naboth's vineyard because uh, he's dead. But God sees it, tells Elijah, and Elijah comes uh, to the vineyard, uh, Naboth's vineyard, but Ahab is he's just enjoying, you know, taking possession of it. And, um, uh, he pronounces, um, you know, uh, uh, the punishment on Ahab and Queen Jezebel. Now, that is the whole uh, story of First Kings chapter 21. Now, you're going to narrate this to the children. So how are you going to uh, narrate it? Uh, there are different ways that you can begin a story. You can begin it through a direct approach or you can uh, begin a story by asking a question 
or you can also use an exciting part in the story it's like a flashback and then you know uh, somewhere in the middle of the story and then go back to the beginning of the story and then end the story or you can begin the story with an illustration or use an object lesson now if you're using a direct approach what does a direct approach mean uh, you know you can start with the action of the story you can think of several sentences which will capture the attention of the children. Uh, you can begin the story by saying, you know, it was just a vineyard. Uh, but children, do you know what is a vineyard? So you can explain what a vineyard is. And you said, you know, there is a king who wanted uh, this vineyard. You know, why he wanted this vineyard? Because it was just right beside his summer palace. And he had gone there and he had seen this, you know, vineyard. It is so green and beautiful and you can just explain and you know the king thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and he wanted that vineyard but you know uh, there was a big problem okay now the children are wondering what was he thinking what is the problem you know um you know what was the problem children the problem was that the vineyard did not belong to him so then they're wondering, hey, who did this vineyard belong to? Did the king have it? Why did he want it? And all of that. So, you know, uh, you can begin with that exciting part of the story. Now the children are, uh, you know, uh, if it's a well-known story, you know, you can begin it with this, uh, with a direct approach. So you're not giving the main characters of the story at the very beginning. Uh, if you do, then, you know, they'll say, hey, we know the story and they will try, they will not listen or they will keep talking in between. They will keep telling the story to their friends uh, or, you know, they can say that, uh, you know, I, I've heard the story, uh, uh, but, you know, I don't like the story and they won't be interested. So, you know, you could start the direct approach. You could also even narrate it the way I remember I narrated the, uh, the, sto uh, the story about how, you know, it was narrated to me when I was a kid um, uh, by one of my uh, teachers, um, uh, you know, about the five loaves and two fishes. You can do that as um, well. Or you can even start the story with a question. You can ask a question, um, you know, which is related to the story or to the Bible lesson or the truth that you're teaching. So here you can uh, begin with a story like uh, a, a question, sorry. Uh, as good as, you know, is it something that you really want to have? You know, all children, every one of us, you know, all of us want to have something or the other at any point of time in our life. So you can ask the children, is it something that you really like to have? You wish you had it, you want it so badly. And so, you know, all of them are excited. They want to, uh, you know, uh, tell you what they really long for or waiting or they want to really have. And then you can get them to answer your question. And then you can say, you know, uh, there was a king who lived long time ago and there was something that he really wanted. You know, even though he was a king, he had everything that he had, you know, everything that he wanted, he could just have it. But there was something that did not belong to him and he really wanted that. And so then, you know, uh, they are, you've raised their curiosity, their excitement. They want to know what is it the king wants to have? What is it that does not belong to him? Did he really have it? Did he get it? Uh, and then you can start the, uh, st narrating the story. Or you can start with an exciting part of the story. Uh, you can use a flashback approach. Uh, you can begin with some outstanding part of the narrative and then go back to the beginning and tell uh, how it all came to uh, be or you know how it came about so you can say you know um, here was this man he had lots and lots of money he lived in this huge big house he had lots of servants and every time he ate his meals he had lots of food on his table a widespread of food you can whatever food that you think of you know uh, and whatever he wanted it was just there on the table you know he lived in the best house in the land he had a huge big house you know um uh, and then you can say, you know, who do you think this person could be, you know, who can have all of these riches and everything. So some bright children might say it's a king or a very rich man or a businessman and say, yes, you know, he was a king and you can expect the king to be very, very happy because, you know, he has everything that he wants. He lives in this big house. He has no problems and all that. But look at this king. You know, he was sulking, he was lying on his bed, he was not eating his food, he was not getting up, getting ready, he was not speaking to anybody. Now, what happened to this king? 
know what went wrong and so then you can start narrating the story to them okay uh, or you can also use an illustration that can get them excited to listen to your story. Uh, you can begin uh, with an everyday illustration or everyday story that will get them connected to the main story. But it, it's important that you keep the illustration very, very brief and short because you have a long teaching content. You have a narrative that follows. So keep it very short. Uh, otherwise, if they listen to the illustration, you know, they'll get tired and bored and they will not listen to the actual teaching content that you have for uh, them. So if you're teaching a smaller kids about uh, 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 First King chapter 21, you can say, you know, um, uh, you know, Susan, she's, she just looked at this Barbie doll and she said, you know, wow, what a beautiful Barbie doll, uh, you know, uh, Rita has. And she kept thinking of this doll throughout the day, you know, a hundred times. She just kept thinking it over and over and over again when she was in school, in class, she was walking towards a home. And when she got home, you know, she looked out through her window, her bedroom window, and she could see uh, Susan playing with this, you know, beautiful pink Barbie doll. And, and Rita thought, I just wish I had this doll in my hand. Of course, she had her own doll, but she you know, loved Susan's Barbie doll. It was so beautiful. And, uh, you know, she just wanted it so much uh, because it was so beautiful. It was the latest uh, doll and all of those things. Uh, and she was very sad that she couldn't have it. But, you know, uh, Susan had it and she didn't have it and she really wanted a doll like that. So, you know, um, something very simple, but you can, you know, maybe change the uh, doll to something else which children like. And then you can ask them, you know, uh, in our story today, there was, there's a king, uh, you know, he had everything, but he just looked at something and he wanted it uh, so much, you know, what that was. And then you can start telling them uh, the story. Okay, so this is uh, different ways that you can begin a story. We'll stop here because uh, we've run out of time. Uh, we'll continue this in the next class and then maybe we can, um, uh, next class on Wednesday can be our last class for uh, children's ministry. And then Pastor Roshan will, um, uh, you know, begin uh, teaching the course on youth ministry. Any questions for today? Any questions? Okay, there are no questions. Uh, thank you all for joining class. Um, see you soon for uh, the next class on first, uh, Second Timothy. Um, enjoy your break and I'll see you uh, in 10 minutes. Thank you.